This is the University of Rochester. Rhetoric and politics are not divorced from culture, so how can we expect the uh, trends that exist in culture not to exist in rhetoric as well? We have a dumbed down, we have a deviance down culture, especially among kids uh, who don't read and parents who don't encourage their kids to read. So why should we expect political rhetoric to somehow be immune from that? Go back, for example, to 1896 or 92, William Jennings Bryan, the great populist from Nebraska, and he's running three times for president. And he gave his speeches on the average of about an hour long, and they were immersed, absorbed in the good book, the Bible, and in the classics, and in William Shakespeare. But the kicker is, Bryant knew that his listeners were just as immersed in these books as he, so that he could talk to them on an equal plane, an equal frame of reference. Can you imagine that today? Not likely. No, we talk in pop culture and we have our little bromides and our bumper stickers and we think that that substitutes for thought. It doesn't. And the irony is, I think that, that politicians uh, too often uh, denigrate the voter. I think the voter in many cases would like to be talked up to and treated with respect instead of talked down to and considered to be an infant or a moron or someone who is not capable of understanding the most rudimentary fact. I think if we asked more of our politicians, we would get by default more in return. People often ask the role of communication in electing a president and then in governing as a president. I think uh, the two are invaluable. You cannot uh, be elected unless you can speak at at least a pedestrian level. And secondly, George W. Bush being the best example of that. But secondly, once you are president, you have to be able to use what Theodore Roosevelt called the power of the bully pulpit. I don't care if it's on the stump or at the United Nations or giving an Oval Office address looking in the monitor and speaking to the American people. You must know Number one, grasp the average American. You must, number two, understand what the priorities of the average American are. And then you have to have the fluency, the poetry, the DNA, the ability, in essence, to utilize your voice, the timing, to use an anecdote, to speak in uh, frames of reference that the average American understands. Uh, Ronald Reagan, in my view, was the best, perhaps, ever certainly in terms of television, but demonstrably in our modern age. He was not called the great communicator for nothing. And ever since then, uh, Reagan left office in 1989. Since then, a number of presidents have been haunted by Reagan's ghost. Uh, he has become the gold standard, if you would, the frame of reference. And no one really has matched Reagan, not that anyone can. The point of the matter is, I think, that you need to develop your own style and then the old song, accentuate the positive and eliminate the negative, that's what you have to do as a public speaker. This is the University of Rochester.